At the receiving site, the reverse of this process occurs. Compressed video systems for each site cost from $20,000 to $50,000. At this time, most vendors do not provide customers with multi-point switching capability, which means only two sites can speak together and see each other at a time. However, in a short while, within the next six months or so, multi-point switching will become more widely available. Now, desktop video conferencing is the most recent innovation in video conferencing, which is suitable to personal communication from your desktop. If you are a PC user or a Macintosh user, you can add a video conferencing board or a card to your personal computer and connect it to a phone line. This system allows you to see the other person and be seen by the other person, talk to the other person and be heard by other person, and share documents. In other words, both parties can work on the same computer application data file at the same time. This video conferencing boards cost from a thousand to four thousand dollars. We now invite questions and comments from the many downlink sites connected with us today during our first question and answer period. You may address your questions to Dr. Saba or Mr. Samudio by fax or voice telephone. We will try to answer as many questions as possible. Therefore, we ask that only one question be asked per phone call and that these questions be as brief as possible. You may call or fax the studio at the numbers on your screen. And we have a, a call at this moment um, that from uh, Tulatepeze. Um, you're, you're on with us. Uh, the Technological University from Tulatepeze. Tulatepeze. Welcome. Por favor, hable. One of the functions of this university is to disseminate the technological culture in the different um, communities of the state of Hidalgo. We would like to know what kind of support we could receive from telecom in order to utilize the, the satellites that are available. And we also would like to know if we can have some technical uh, support and what are the legal requirements and the papers we have to submit for having a channel assigned to us, ITFS, in order to transmit, uh, to broadcast instructional programs. Mr. Samudio, Samudio, I think that, that question is obviously in your uh, lap. Uh, would you care to address it? Well, yes. Telecom from Mexico does not uh, provide any technical support. That comes directly from the National uh, for the Ministry of Education. However, we do have a fee for the use of the satellites. That is 50 percent when it is for instructional or educational purposes, which is non-profit. If you give us your uh, address, we would very, be very happy to help you or you give us your phone number. And I could give you some information for the legal requirements and the paperwork that you have to um, uh, fill out in order to, to contract a satellite with us, as well as the media you need for using that channel and, and connecting to the receptive to, to the, the sites. Uh, thank you. We uh, uh, are welcome any more uh, faxes and, and phone calls. Um, we have a question from Monterrey, from the Comisión Federal de Monterrey, uh, that asks about some examples of video editing systems. Uh, Dr. Saba, you might want to uh, make some comments about choices of video editing. Sure. Uh, as far as uh, video editing systems are concerned, you can uh, pretty much design a system that is not very expensive by using 
two decks and a control unit. Uh, and gradually, as your uh, system grows, as your use grow, then add to that uh, video editing system. Uh, add a switcher to it and add um, other equipment. Um, as far as specific examples are concerned, all manufacturers produce them, Sony, Panasonic, uh, um, Ampex, many other uh, manufacturing companies around the world create those. And so the best thing to do is to uh, find a uh, dealer in your area and find out what kind of equipment they carry, what are the price ranges, and communicate with them. Okay. We have a question from uh, Tlatsiaco, uh, the Instituto Tecnologico de Tlatsiaco. Uh, welcome to our teleconference. Your question? Tlatsiaco, hable. This is a question for Mr. Samudio, Engineer Samudio. How does the, uh, the treaty, the NAFTA, uh, influence the use of how does it affect the use of uh, s satellite signals and what are the measures that you are using in order to what are the the considerations for the transmittal of uh, educational programs yes NAFTA's consequences for you could you comment on that well we really are not involved in the copyright. Uh, we know that the equipment, uh, the telecommunications equipment, are can be imported into Mexico without any duties. Um, however, as far as the copyright uh, for educational material, many of the institutions, especially the uh, the ministries have uh, not made any claims or any suits on what they want is the use and application of their materials rather than uh, than copyright um, and uh, so we are not concerned with that okay I'm sure that uh, NAFTA has been of interest to you in many other ways as well we have a question from uh, uh, Tepic uh, the Instituto Tecnológico de Tepic, Nayarit. Uh, welcome to our teleconference. Your question? Well, we are calling from Tepic. And we would like to know how interactive television works. And in what year do you think this will be a more common, more commonplace? This is all. Thank you. I guess I'll go ahead and respond to that question. Uh, it's been uh, a guessing game as uh, when true interactive television services are going to be put in place. There have been some uh, test sites in several states, such as in California, in Colorado, and in uh, Florida here in the United States. Uh, we have uh, some other versions of interactive television. Uh, for example, on our campus at San Diego State University, we have a two-way dedicated system to a uh, elementary school where elementary school students can ask questions and uh, hear their responses from faculty on campus. Uh, however, uh, a full digital interactive television system is probably two or three years uh, ahead of us. Our next question is from Toluca, the Instituto Tecnológico de Toluca in the Estado de México. Welcome. And uh, we also have a question from uh, uh, Tepic, a, a second question. This has to do with the short life of the satellites. Uh, for example, why is it there such a relatively short life to the uh, Morelos uh, satellite? Uh, shouldn't it operate for a million years? 
Eh, well, there are two, uh, two main reasons for that. The first one is that the, um, the life of uh, these, these devices, of like, like a satellite, for instance, you cannot repair a satellite because it's at an orbit of that is very high, and we still don't have an aircraft, a spacecraft that comes can come up to 23,000 kilometers up in the space in order to to um, repair that. So the devices must be designed in such a way that they can um, be in use for some 25 years or so, or they can also fail before that. Morelos had nine years of life based on the fuel that it had on reserve in order to be connect to do connections on the orbit and. That is a fuel that it has. There, there is a limited amount, and of course, if we could put more fuel in it, well, the, the satellite then is going to be heavier. And also, the um, progress, the development in technologies, also um, makes it that the satellites become obsolete before they're the end of their life cycle. Um, Solidarity will have 14 years of life. And that's what the fuel, that's the, the amount of fuel it has. And we are expecting that it will be able to remain in the orbit. And so the main reason is the fuel that the, that the satellites have carry in order to function. Thank you. We have a question uh, from Secate. Uh, this is uh, located in Tecate, uh, Baja, California. Secate, uh, uh, welcome and your question. Thank you. What are the possibilities for telecom to install a video conference system in Mexico? Mr. Samudio? There are several video conference systems that are operating in Mexico. We have a system that has several spaces in, in several places like Hermosillo, Guadalajara, in the uh, federal district, among others. And um, the problem that we have with video conference is not anymore the broadcast medium, but as Dr. Saba is explaining, rather having the places the, the, to produce the programs. and. And so we are expecting to have a the demand that will um, enable us to apply the systems. Um, in Monterey, the Technological Institute has several places, several auditoriums in the country that um, offer the private and public institutions uh, for them to use these inst these facilities. And there are several systems in in place in Mexico, and Telecom has one of them. Thank you. We have a question also from uh, the uh, Bachilleras, uh, the Colegio in Sinaloa, uh, in Los Mochis, Sinaloa. Uh, welcome to our teleconference. Thank you. No se oye bien, huh? It's, we can't really hear that. I'm sorry, there's a lot of interference. Okay, all right. We have a technical problem with that connection, unfortunately. Uh, we, we have a question from Pemex and Ver Via Hermosa. What kind of personnel are needed for conducting teleconferences on a regular basis? What sort of team is, is needed? You need to uh, have uh, several professionals involved. Uh, for example, you need a producer and a director to create the program and help participants to learn about how the equipment work, and what are the procedures for a teleconference. In addition to that, you need uh, technical people who would operate the cameras, um, work in the control room, uh, work on the telecommunication system to make sure that the receiving sites uh, all are receiving the signals and they can talk back to the origination site. So I would say that the personnel would be uh, production personnel um, and technical personnel, as well as those people who need to design and help the user to communicate. Thank you. Uh, another question uh, that that has been raised is uh, concerns the the purposes of the video conference. What what are the primary purposes that you see people using a, a video conference for? Are there, are there particular things that you do with a video conference and particular things that are not good on a video conference? 
Well, uh, any time that uh, you have interaction involved, uh, you need to respond to the questions of users, you would use teleconferencing. It is a good medium for a number of people to communicate with a group of experts. Uh, one of the concepts that are emerging is distributed expertise. Uh, for example, if you have one expert in one location in your company and your organization, you can share the expertise of that one person throughout your uh, company in several locations. Uh, we have a question from Mexicali, our colleagues in the Universidad Autónoma de Baja California. Uh, welcome to our teleconference. This is a question for Mr. For Engineer Zamudio. We want to know whether the the um, the telecommunications of Mexico has some kind of way or some kind of mechanism whereby we can evaluate the advance or the penetration in, in, how we, in how this is being applied in the higher education institutions in our country and how it can be penetrating that, that area because it would be very interesting to have to know given the the developments that have come about in the area of communications. Thank you. Mr. Samudio. Thank you for the question. We are really not a company that is uh, focused on evaluating the the edu teleeducational uh, programs. We know that the programs uh, from the Ministry of Education um, have been very successful, and that's why they are having 10,000 more reception sites, and and including the um, the Technological Institute at in Monterey, and w they are all using the satellite in order to. Uh, for teleconferencing. Uh, and what we could do is if you give us your phone number and your address, we can, of course, give you some information and we can let you know what are the educational institutions that are using the satellite for that and the features, the technical features, so that you can also connect the, to the signal or con contact these institutions. And so you can also have a cooperation amongst all of the institutions and um, educational agencies as the, who, that have um, distance education programs. Our next question is uh, from Guadalajara, our colleagues in uh, Guadalajara, Jalisco. Welcome. Bueno. Hello? Siga nomás. Yes? Un momento, por favor. Okay, just a minute. Hello? One moment, please. Okay. Hello? Hello? Hable, por favor. No se oye nada. Okay, the question is the following. Taking into consideration that for an educator, the use of um, teleconferencing means having some technical knowledge regarding the use of TV and video. And considering that for a, a technician in video technology, it would mean the use of a of a educational technology. In other words, one, one, some persons are on one end and the other people are on the other end. And so, is there any, some kind of um, training or preparation, some kind of uh, program in order to design and prepare the support material for the, these kinds of events. And then, do you have that kind of um, program at the university in San Diego? And if so, what are the duration of those courses and what are the costs? Also, 
prerequisitos para tomarlo. It would be interesting to know what the prerequirements are in order to be able to attend one such courses. Gracias. Thank you. Thank you. A very good uh, uh, question. And uh, before I comment on it, would either of you care to respond? Sure, I'd I, I, I love to. Good. Uh, yes, we do have such a program at San Diego State University, and I'm really glad that you asked the question. Uh, I teach in the Department of Educational Technology. Uh, we have a master's program specifically designed to train educational technologists who help educators and technical staff to create and present instructional materials in a variety of media, including television, multimedia, um, print-based uh, media, and all kinds of other uh, media of communication. Now, that's a full degree program. It is a full degree program, and I'm glad that, that uh, you um, asked that question because we also have a certificate program in which students uh, can take uh, a variety of different courses uh, that are related to their needs instead of going through the whole uh, master's program. How long would that take? Uh, the uh, certificate program is 12 credit uh, units, 12 credit hours for, um, and I would say that it would uh, be possible to do that in one semester or uh, an intense semester on a summer. Okay. And for details on fees, they could uh, uh, write or inquire? Sure. They, they can write to us here at San Diego State University, mm -hmm. uh, Department of Educational Technology, uh, San Diego, California, and the zip code is 92182. Also, I think that the materials, uh, that, that the organization sponsoring this teleconference and uh, uh, Dr. Nicolano Cardenas would be happy to uh, supply additional information about opportunities specifically around teleconferencing and uh, spending some time uh, visiting or studying the kinds of things that we're doing here. Uh, thank you for the question. Our next question is from uh, uh, Monterrey, the uh, Comisión Federal de Electricidad in Monterrey, Nuevo León. Welcome to our uh, discussion. Good morning. How can we obtain some information or brochures um, as far as brands, prices, and suggestions uh, for purchasing equipment to produce videos, uh, industrial videos? Thank you. Um, any uh, representative from manufacturers um, in your location would be more than happy to uh, provide you with brochures and information on their products. The best uh, thing to do is to locate representatives of electronic manufacturing companies such as Sony, Panasonic, RCA, Ampex, etc., and uh, get information from them. Thank you. Uh, there are many sources for such information, and uh, again, if you need to contest, ha contact us directly, you could. Instituto Tecnológico de León in León, Guanajuato, welcome to our teleconference. Thank you. We would like to ask, what will be the influence of uh, Compact TV? on video conference programs. And we also would like to know whether or not in the near future or in the long-term future we will have some kind of training programs and also what would be the organizations providing such programs, such uh, training programs through video conferencing. Thank you. Okay. Training programs? Programas de capacitación. Uh, well, uh, I understand uh, in the that uh, uh, compact TV or compressed television, do we mean really compressed television? Uh, one thing that compressed television will do is that it will make it more available to schools and organizations who cannot afford 
full television, full broadcast television facilities. So uh, it's a medium that will be at the disposal of a number of organizations and, and people. That would be the impact. As far as training programs are concerned, I really don't think that, that training for compressed television is any different uh, than training for other um, television-based media of communication. There may be some slight variations, but um, any good program in broadcast communication or in educational technology would also be able to prepare users for compressed television as well. And we have a question from Chiapas, the Instituto Tecnologico de Tuzla Gutierrez. Welcome. The question is the following. Considering that the educational coverage in Chiapas is very limited because of geographical conditions, it is, possi is it possible for us to have some support, technical support, to use the satellite in alternate educational programs? Yes, in fact, the plan that we have in order to acquire some 10,000 TV reception receptors uh, basically to provide tele-secondary programs, the Ministry of Education or, um, has also planned to have uh, elementary school uh, courses via satellite to be broadcast, also to be extended to the secondary level. And this should be implemented in, in different phases. And I understand that in Chiapas is where we have the, uh, we have, um, we're expecting to install many more uh, stations in that particular area of the country because that's where the need is. And this will have to be done uh, before the end of the year. We have time for one more call in this question and answer session. There will be an additional session in a few moments. Uh, so in Sinaloa, the uh, Colegio and Los Muchis. Welcome. Adelante la pregunta, por favor. Who do we have to go to in order to have some technical orientation to install a cultural radio uh, within the colegio? Perhaps you could try that one. Nos puede contestar. Eh, for a broadcast station, uh, state one, there is a great demand in many, for many radio stations at universities, and all of this is centrally managed through the um, the, inst the local institution. The, this will have to be dealt with by the Ministry of um, Transportation and, and Communications. And if you give us your phone number, we can let you know exactly the address, to go, the, the place to, to go to for information. Uh, we now will uh, uh, stop our question and answer period for about 15 minutes. You're welcome to still send faxes and, and call for a, a session a little bit later. Dr. Farhad Saba has prepared additional materials for us today as well, and we now turn our attention to those explanations. Dr. Saba. Selecting the most appropriate medium depends on a number of factors. Needs of the learners and faculty in terms of representation of voice, video, such as full motion or compressed, text, graphic, needs of the learners in terms of interactivity, cost of equipment and services, availability of equipment and services, issues related to training faculty and students to use the selected or proposed equipment, long-term viability of the system. How do we plan and design for implementation of such systems? Most educational institutions with expertise in instructional design and telecommunications have their systems designed by in-house personnel. If in-house expertise is not available, then most educational institutions, as well as businesses and industries, rely on a consultant. In either case, 
Chances are that you will need to consult with vendors and other professionals to design a system. So let's look at what you need to do before approaching vendors and consultants. Take an inventory of available telecommunications and media production facilities and equipment in your organization. Do not leave anything out. A simple telephone or a fax machine may become very useful to contact and maintain communication with learners. Find out how much your organization is willing to spend on a distance education system. Quite often, the budget at your disposal determines the type of system you're going to get. Look at the curriculum you are going to be working with and find out how best it can be communicated in terms of audio, video, graphics, and text. Decide what level of interactivity will best suit the subject matter. Decide what level of interactivity your audience needs in order to benefit from the instruction by the faculty or a group of experts as well as from the instructional materials. Decide in which environment your learners are going to take the course which you will be offering. Are they going to be at home, in a business office, in a classroom of an elementary school, or in a library or a community center? Now you're ready to select a medium or a group of media that you can afford, match the requirement of knowledge representation for a particular subject matter, and provide adequate interactivity for your audience. Decide what kind of equipment you need at the origination site and the receiving sites. Decide what kind of telecommunication system you need to connect the origination site to the receiving sites. When you have these specifications ready, then you can start shopping for a system which meet your needs. Contacting vendors or system integrators before you have done your homework is usually counterproductive. Consulting with a distance education expert or a communication specialist at the planning stage, however, may be advantageous to you and save you time and money in the long run. For example, if your curriculum is self-paced and immediate feedback is not necessary, you may wish to design your system around print materials and videotapes. In this case, you need to acquire a computer-based desktop publishing system, a single camera video production system, an editing facility, and rely on mail for interactivity with your audience. However, if your audience requires immediate feedback, and if they have access to cable television, then you need to work in a TV studio where you can broadcast live and receive audience questions and feedback through a telephone. In the first case, you need to consult with a computer expert to select the most appropriate hardware and software for, for your desktop publishing needs. Also, you may need to hire a system integrator to sell you the production equipment and install your post-production facility. In the second case, your solution is a bit more complicated. You either have to have steady access to a television production studio or design and build the studio yourself, which is a costly venture, and the cost may run to several million dollars. Also, you need to have access to a cable television system and establish a reliable telephone service so your on-camera teacher in the studio can respond to questions and comments by the audience. For a more limited distribution, for example, within a company or branches of a retail store, you may wish to set up a private network and work with either compressed video or desktop video. In these cases, there are two crucial matters that you need to consider. Are the services available 
through your phone company. It is essential for you to find out what kind of services your phone company provides and in which geographic areas those services are available. For example, if you need digital phone lines with a certain amount of channel capacity to carry your compressed video signal, you need to find out if digital lines are available at your institution and if the same services are available where your audiences are. The second matter relates to the speed at which information technology is evolving today. Video systems, telecommunications and computer software are among the fastest, if not the fastest developing products today. Perhaps no other industry is evolving as rapidly as information technology. Therefore, it is wise to hire a system integrator to install the lines and equipment for you. Now you may ask, how do individualized training applications fit in with these media? Well, originally telecommunications-based distance education applications were designed to reach as wide of an audience as possible. For example, radio or television was adopted to reach as many people as they may have covered. This is one reason why developing countries who needed to reach numerous learners in a wide geographical area adopted broadcasting for educational purposes at a much wider scale than for instance Germany or France. As cost of equipment for origination sites and receiving sites decreased and as equipment became smaller and more manageable for the individual teacher and learner distance education applications moved closer to fulfilling individual needs. For example, the recently developed desktop video systems lend themselves well to one-on-one -on -one instruction as well as to individual tutoring and consulting. Also, worldwide networks such as the Internet allow the adult learner to organize a learning session for himself or for herself and use the vast amount of available information throughout 